That's confirmed. Awesome. Here we go in three, two, one. Dear Atari Anonymous, ever since my husband Bruno returned from Earth with asteroids, the new Atari home video game, he and the rest of the family do nothing but play asteroids. Bruno says asteroids is good practice for his interplanetary life. Tell me, dear Atari Anonymous, with everybody hooked on asteroids, what on Earth is a poor Martian mother to do? Wow. That <laughs> felt very Coneheads. Have Coneheads been done by then? Yeah, seventy, late 70s, yeah. I think so. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Play Retro. This is Play Retro. It's a show about retro video gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Johnson, and I, well, I never use hyperspace. Know why? Because hyperspace is not the get-out-of-jail card you think it is. It's oh. random, and it's stupid, and it will get you killed. No, I prefer to blow up my vectors head on like a real spaceman confined to a tiny pointy ship shaped like a pizza slice. And I like to shoot the top of the screen and screw you over at the bottom. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, hi. And I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway. And I've got a bad case of the Blasteroids, just like in that commercial. And there's only one cure. Fitty more sit and one of those inflatable donut cushions. Now sit back, relax. And watch me rotate around in a circle for 30 minutes shooting space rocks and eliminating the threat of alien invaders. Suck my wedge-shaped vector ship! As Scott said, pew, pew, pew. More like Vectroids. Vectroids. Yeah, we're not just going to talk mm-hmm. about Asteroids. We're going to talk about Asteroids Deluxe. We're going to talk about Blastroids. It's and Blaster... blaster er, 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 Blasteroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a er in the middle of that, right? Yep. That was a game in Vegas a couple years ago for our contest that I should have won, but the knob was busted, and so we had to had to go try something else. <laughs> Some might say the knob was playing. <laughs> yeah, you'd never know what that knob is going to do. Anyway, uh, it's all about asteroids today, and you can tell we have an excitement in our voice because this is a true classic in the arcade playing world. And um, man, I have too many memories to even count. We'll talk about a bunch of them, and also the background behind this fantastic series of games. Before we do that, though. I didn't do any uh, retro shit this week. Nothing. I did. I did do one oh, thing. Hey, I did. I did one thing. A lot busy? of one thing, and it was not retro at all. Uh, although it made me feel right at home, like uh, a lot of retro games do. I played a lot of uh, this game called Lightyear Frontier, which is uh, oh. you walking around in a giant mech on a planet, uh, farming, collecting resources, unlocking new uh, blueprints, selling stuff to a ship that comes down once in a while to buy your stuff, uh, rain. Uh, snow, different biomes. Actually, I don't know if there's snow. Well, you, that you, you, you would, that that game would not exist if it were for the games we're talking about today, right? So, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's, it's uh, a retro ancestry. Yeah, Earth. everything retro, yeah. everything retro comes back around to something modern, and uh, this one scratches a very specific itch. It's on Steam for like seventeen bucks. Uh, it's in early access, but I think it's in great shape already. So easy buy for me. It's also on Game Pass. So if that sounds interesting to you. Try out Lightyear Frontier, uh, which has nothing to do with Buzz Lightyear at all. There's none of it's not in there. So so you're here to tell me that, that you didn't spend the week dying Easter eggs with the with the kids. No, so we did do a little bit of that yesterday, but not the okay. week. A week is too long being doing that. Forget it. But oh, we, why we, not? I mean, that's, you you got to make some masterpieces. We died like a dozen eggs, and that was enough. <laughs> We're yeah. good. Well. You still smell like vinegar? Yeah, and most of them cracked, and there's blue paint all over the kids' hands, and it won't come off. Yes! And, yeah. You're Easter, and good job. That's right. What would you do this week? You got a... Uh, everyone's talking about this Atari 400 Mini. Did this arrive yet, or when it when's it coming? What do you got going there? So, it released yesterday. Oh, but, shit. Jeez Louise. But uh, Amazon was quick enough to ship it right to me because I pre-ordered it. Look at this. Oh, I got one of those. Oh. I got one of those little those little joysticks. Remember little yeah, little, little Atari? Two? Everybody had one of these Atari twenty six hundred joystick. We plugged these things into a million a million different devices. It would work in different uh, areas. It was a, it was a classic. Yeah, it was a classic. Got that single button and that. But here is here's the jam. Yeah, let's see here's the, the console. Let's see the unit. Here's the here's the console, man. Here is the unit. Oh, it is a mini. It is the mini. It. The 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 four hundred. Right. That's what it's called. The mini four hundred from Atari. Um, and this plays a lot of games like the tweet we've been waiting for. This is 2600. The, the it plays the eight bit machines. I actually have a, uh, a 800, I believe, XL, a real one. Um, but this is like the old, the really old school. It's got the membrane type keyboard on. Everybody always asks me every time I get one of these minis, oh, does the keyboard work? 
no, no, it does not. It does not work. It's a little USB device, and there's no way, and you wouldn't want to type on it anyway. Oh, it was a could. terrible, terrible keyboard back then. Well, I, hate, I hate membrane keyboards. They're, yeah. they're, I just hate them. They, they, awful. Can they do that? Yeah. But look here, we got four USBs across the top, so you can uh, across the front, so you can you can plug in all your controllers. You can buy extra controllers and paddles. Uh, not only does this system come with some pr pretty classic uh, Atari type games that would be on the eight bit system, it also uh, comes with uh, the suggestion that hey, why don't you put your own games on there? Yeah. So get your own ROMs, put them on there. And uh, you can stick that in the back back here where you got your USB-C for power yep. uh, and an HDMI and you got a little plug. But this is very retro as that it said. What, what color is this Scott? What do you what do you call that brown? I mean, it's beige, but it's a dark it's beige. beige. It's like green. Almost. Yeah, right. Like yellow, I, like I, yellow I, green. The kind of thing you'd, you'd like a, an old medieval belt might be this color, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you got your you got your basic on here. Remember, uh, program basic. You can you can fire that up. Mm -hmm. You can do that, and you can play uh, the the game list here, which I was trying to pull up, but for some reason on the site it doesn't show it. I definitely know it has Berserk, uh, Star Raiders, and twenty five classic Atari eight bit games, including Star Raiders two, Berserk, Lee Minor twenty forty nine, mm -hmm. and more. Yep. So it's compatible with. Uh, the Atari 400 games, the 800 games, the XLE, and the 5200 games as well. So if it can play any of those, it can play those others. That are How much does this thing run you? What's the price tag on this bit on this bad boy? Um, at launch, it was 119, and I ordered it, pre-ordered it a while back, and I completely forgot about it. Oh my god, can you push this little button? Does that do anything? There's a little button on the thing pop that you up. put the cartridge in, but it looks like it would, but it doesn't do anything. Oh man, oh, you never know what you're gonna but get. But yeah, one one nineteen, um, and it's it's pretty neat. It it will only do 720p, by the way, though. Or I'm sorry, 720, yeah. So not the 1080, but that's okay because these are usually most of these games have very large. Well, yeah, these uh, are old old ass blocky games. pixels. Yeah, exactly. You so don't need anything special it's there. Look good. But look at this thing, no. Chad. Here's a close up of the old actual uh, 400, and then this on top of it. You can get a size difference idea. Um, looks like it's very true to the look of it the color of it or dead oh, on the yes. how it's all arranged the way that keyboard's tinted all of it this was yes it was lovely made i actually did a unboxing video before we did this but uh yeah it's 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 well boxed now mine got a little bit of a ding and packaging thanks, thanks a lot thanks, UPS amazon or whoever yeah thank you amazon well i don't think it was them or it could have been i guess at the warehouse but well they didn't package it well enough it's a problem mm -hmm. they didn't put it in a they didn't put it in a big box with all I should have. I, I always tell my friends to do this because, uh, but I forget sometimes. You should always mark it as a gift. Otherwise, they may just ship out the box and just go, here you go. Put a little plastic around it. And go, here you go. Yeah. Here's the item. But if you say I, it's a gift, they'll put it in another box and they'll, they'll do a little better job. It's also a rumor so. that you got some new headphones that are super retro. I haven't seen these yet. Oh, I put, I didn't get those out because it was, it was the caveat. It was oh. like, if I don't get the Atari Mini, because I was sweating it. I was like, oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Yeah. Uh, I I have some cool ass retro headphones, uh, but but they're they're boxed up right now. Oh, I, I want to see those out. eventually. Are they what are they like Walkman? They stuff? really are. Yeah, they're the old Walkman. It's got the orange uh, orange ear pad stuff, yeah, yeah. and it's you know the, just little metal the you know, metal uh, front head wrap. You oh, know, right. so it's it's just so it's so old school retro, but it's Bluetooth. Probably these right here. I'm guessing all of these are wired, but like these old Sony's right here. I'm putting, pulling up. Let me see what they probably yeah. If you had some old Sony's like the Sony Walkman, get those. Yep, that's pretty it. much those. Yeah, but they're not marked. They're not marked as as Sony. Right. But yeah, it's those. You know what like I really said, want? Like band. there's a there's a whole obviously retro right now is huge. Um, us, right. Us making this show only being a small tip of the iceberg to what's out there uh, for retro fans. Um, what I want is what I'm putting up now, which is this set of headphones. These things look like they're made in the 40s. Um, I want a pair of these real bad. <laughs> oh yes. I don't even know yes, why they look I want like, them, but I want it them. It looks like somebody busted out. Looks like somebody sawed one of those old uh metal uh microphones that you would yeah. see from radio shows and stuff like in, cut in it half, right in half and then and then they put it like on the outside. It's got that nice uh leather look. It's look, kind of looks like almost a combination of stuff you would have in the library if you if you grew up and went to school during like the seventies and yeah. the eighties and stuff. It looks yeah. looks kind of like that. It's like something like yeah. uh, if MacGyver was stuck in a room in the seventies with a leather couch and an old microphone, yeah, he would build this. This is why true this is this is why true <laughs> recorded uh history is so important because 
in popular culture, we'll lots of times bastardize stuff and it still looks retro, like what you just showed us. Mm-hmm. And none of none of those headphones would have come with like a, a microphone on the outside of it. Mm-hmm. And so you might you might see these in the future and think, oh, that's how it was yeah. during that time period. But yeah. that wasn't accurate. As far as I know, this is yeah, this seems like maybe they're just messing around, but but it looks cool. It. It's a really good artistic interpretation yeah. of that, and I love it. Were you it annoyed? Were you filter. annoyed that you just barely got the eight bit do uh, NES thing, and now there's the son of a <laughs> son of a butthole? I was so mad. So eight uh, bit do has come out with these branded mechanical keyboards, yeah. uh, and I looked at the Famicom one and the NES one, and I I had it in my wish list. I wasn't sure if I was ready to pull the trigger, um, and it, I got it for my birthday the NES one. And I was super excited. I was like, oh, this is so cool. It's a really nice keyboard. Matter of fact, I'm using it right now. It's birth, nice. Birthday, everybody. Birth. It, birth birthday. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's very cool. But then this week, I've only had this for like barely even a week. They come out with a Commodore 64 branded one, which is my love. It's my first love. You know, I never had an NES keyboard because it didn't exist. But I did have, uh, you know, the, the all-in-one bread bin that is the Commodore 64. And they've got this Commodore 64 mechanical keyboard that makes me love it so much. That's why I pre-ordered it. It's pre-ordered. You're getting it comes that with too. You're in night. You're in the. You're in the insane person. I love it so much. That you're getting yeah, that. I had to have it. I had. What choice did I have? And my my significant other actually said, "Well, now back send back the NES one." I said, "Nope." <laughs> no, you want to have both. You want both those. I things. get both. Yeah, I get both. That's right. And uh, yeah, so you know, thank her for being patient with me and, and loving me anyway. But yeah, the Commodore sixty four one looks so freaking cool. But they're about uh, one hundred and nineteen. The uh, the NES one is only eighty nine dollars, and the reason why is because um, the the Commodore sixty four one comes with a joystick, like the old school oh, yeah. uh, joystick, like you would have with the. Uh, with the Commodore 64. It's got the buttons, those and two big oversized buttons, plus the joystick, right? They all come with oversized buttons. They just sell these programmable big side buttons yeah. uh, with all of their keyboards, and they're all, you know, similar looking. And so you just... Uh, right. So you get that plus those. plus that round knob, red top joystick you had with the old yeah. Commodore games. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, if I wanted... I've got a mouse coming with a D-pad. Uh, for the NES, it a was mouse? on back orders. Hold on, a mouse with a D pad on it? Yeah. So we oh, talked about. Oh, I've when I got seen this. this. I've seen this. Yes, NES yeah, mouse. Yeah, a little thumb D pad. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. So this is also them, though, right? This is eight bit yes. do. Yeah. Yes, here. that that is the matching uh, mouse that comes with that eight bit do NES keyboard, and it that's where you use your D pad at. There it is, Chad. You know. Take a look at that. Yeah. Now, how do you? <sighs> can understand this. I've heard it kind of works like a third mouse wheel. I haven't had it yet, but I heard it's kind of like, you know, your your mouse wheel. I think you can actually rub it. I don't know if you can rub it. I don't know. We're going to find out when I get it. All right. I'm curious. When you get it, we'll talk about it because where else are you going to talk yeah. about it? It's a perfect place to do yeah. it. Yeah. You got to have it. Uh, all right. Well, there's that. Let's do this. Shall we play a game? We shall indeed. We're going to talk today about Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, and beyond, and uh, way beyond. In fact, there's a newer game out that a lot of people don't even know about that I think is yeah. worthy of your time and worth playing and is really good on Steam Deck. We'll get to all of that in a little bit, but we're going to talk about the original Asteroids. It's the best-selling Atari game of all time, by the way. If you do all of the adding up of the numbers, uh, Asteroids is responsible for a vast... Uh, 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 part of why Atari did great in arcades and would continue to have that name do well at home and everything else. Uh, it was a it was a big deal. Uh, the game came out in 1979, so we are just prior to you know the 80s and things are about to take off. It was all in vector. In fact, if anything, I would say. Now I'll show our little intro screen for people real quick here. It's some some of the lightest vector ever. It's very faint. Have you noticed that when you go yes. play it? It's really weird. Yes, I, I I have. It's like the lines are very small. I don't know why that was. I don't know if there was some kind of question about the vector monitor being able to to render. But probably lots of times these were in really dimly lit places. So it was probably fine. It was actually probably better than it glaring at you. And there may have been some places you could have, uh, uh, you know, adjust it. I don't know. But I'll tell a, you who would yeah. know. Who? And not to get not to get too sidetracked off this, but this week. I like to usually state my sources and stuff. If you've never seen the YouTube TNT Amusements Inc., yeah. these guys have been around forever. 
and I've kind of seen some of their videos, but their videos on uh, the restoration videos on uh, asteroids, and I think they did one on uh, asteroids deluxe and blasteroids is amazing. Those guys are so much fun. That's TNT Amusements Inc. You can we'll go afterwards. I'll say it at the end of the show too, so you don't forget. Yeah. But yeah, that those guys know some stuff, and that was fun looking inside. And I think maybe. Maybe just maybe just speculation that it was probably that it needed to be faint for well, that reason. If you fired it up, dark. you'd hear this. Oh, the memories, the memories. Yeah, this is OK. By the way, I don't know what the deal was back then with. And then it yes. would get faster and faster, just like spa Space Invaders. The it was the same thing. It was. It yeah. was the heartbeat. Space Invaders was was before this and inform what they would do here. Um, and yes, exactly. It's like, how do you create that? You know, that feeling of, oh, shit. Yeah, well, there you go. Yep. Bum, bum, bum. And what's funny is, like, to, even today I will play and buy games that are space-based, 2D in effect, you know, flat sort of experiences that where I have to shoot mm -hmm. down a bunch of stuff coming at me. Think, you know, Geometry Wars or any number of other dual-stick shooter. And I always go, oh, boy, I sure love those dual-stick shooters. But I can trace that enjoyment all the way back to this thing. Um, yeah. it is, it is like the proto version of that. Now it used buttons. It didn't have sticks. There was no analog. It was, you know, press a button to go yeah, to rotate was... left, rotate, right, fl thrust with another one, hyperspace, <laughs> never use it, that kind of thing. Um, and by the way, you want to hear the scariest sound of ever in, in a game that was used to keep me up at night. This oh, is right here. Do. Listen to this. Hold on. Not that one. It's pretty, it's pretty scary. No, it's not that I don't have that one. The little tiny guy. Oh yeah, low is super fast. He's really yeah, high pitched, yeah. super fast. He also has way better yeah. aim than the fat ship, and uh, they're yeah. a nightmare later on because you get them constantly, and it's it gets real hard. Let me just I need to get this diatribe out of my my system about yes. hyperspace real quick. So the way the thing was laid out, you had rotate left, rotate right, you had thrust, and you had fire, and you had hyperspace. And the hyperspace right. button was kind of off by itself, so you wouldn't accidentally hit it. So that wasn't really a problem. But hyperspace, the whole idea was, oh, there are way too many asteroids that are all closing in on me. I need to get out of here. And so I'm going to use this thing that only has three charges or whatever it was. And it will get me out of, it's a get out of jail card, right? Right. I can get out of here. I mean, it even had charges. Maybe it was just always there. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. I've never, I've never used all of them because I usually don't use them. You shouldn't because here's why. So all these asteroids, they're all coming at you. They're closing in. You're like, oh, I'm going to die. If I don't want to die and lose a ship, I'm going to hyperspace. You hit hyperspace. It does not just send you to a nice open little area where there is no activity. <laughs> it sends you somewhere completely randomly. And oftentimes, because the screen is full of chunks of rock flying through space, right? there's no place where a rock isn't about to be or already at that you can transport to. <laughs> so hitting hyperspace especially at times in this game where you need it, will send you straight to the center of an asteroid and you will die immediately. It is the worst, like, bonus button slash I need an extra little kick to get out of the way kind of idea in a video game in the history of games. And I say this as somebody right. who reveres asteroids. I love asteroids. But that hyperspace button, now here's the biggest problem, Brian. Okay, I'll explain why it sucks and I never used it. But then I started to think, man, that means every arcade machine had to have uh, circuitry and wiring and buttons and everything all laid out and ready to rock where you had to wire that thing to have a hyperspace button that nobody in their right mind should ever push for any reason at ever at all. And it pissed me off, that damn thing. So <laughs> F hyperspace. It sucks I, to this day. It's the worst. All right? That's That's, all. that's interesting. So uh, we know... Okay, so this was the time when you were, you were trying to get people to, to play a game but you were trying to get them off as fast as possible. So the hyperspace thing, I'm curious to know, because I, I I watched some people who played it for days. People people got really good at this game where they would just like, they could play for days, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious to know if any of them used hyperspace and any other things. I don't think so. There's, a, there's all kinds of theories on how you should play at this most simple game, which is just, you know, a game about inertia, uh, it's about uh, uh, splitting of, of asteroids. So you, you have three different levels of asteroids. You get the largest asteroid, you get a medium size one, a small one, all gives you different points um, based on the size, the easier to hit, the less points. But the first time you hit the first one, it splits into two, and then you hit those two, and they split into two. 
and they get smaller faster and they get more annoying. Yeah. Um, but like you said, you got your rotate left and right buttons and then you got your thrust and your fire buttons. My personal thing to do though, I stayed in the center. When I did my intro earlier, I hardly ever used thrust. Oh, because constantly I, use I thrust. Just, That's crazy to me. Go ahead. Keep talking. Right. It is. I, I only did that when I would get near the end of like, like when you first start with the big asteroids and stuff, I just stayed in the middle, but near the end, you know, where you got to chase down something or the UFOs start coming out. Yeah. You might have to use thrust. You might have to move a little bit, especially the little guy. He's going to come after you. So, but yeah. I use thrust very sparingly. It's mostly just rotating in circles and firing. And occasionally I've tried to use the hyperspace. Um, and I'm with you. It doesn't seem to work well, and I'm not sure which revision I was using because they did it, they did do tweaks. So it, the, these ROMs had tweaks that would send out, you know. And I, I think I played revision three or four when I played this week. Yeah, and I found the hyperspace to be fairly fairly fair. It got um, better as though, time went on, and I think in dis- deluxe, which we'll get to in a minute, deluxe actually right. tried to put you in empty space when you hyperspaced. So there was right. a, actually, there I, think they, I think there's only a shield in deluxe. I don't think you actually have. What am I thinking of? Am I thinking of? Um... Maybe you're thinking of Ed Log's golden asteroids. Machine. Maybe, but I think what I'm thinking of is we'll talk. I want to talk about that too, but I think what I'm thinking right, right, of right. probably is this new thing. I've been playing a bunch yeah. of that, and it does right this a lot better. I played a lot of asteroids this week, just kind of back yes. and forth, different stuff. Um, here's the other thing I want to credit the game for: there is in modern gaming or other games I've played throughout you know the years, there yes. are a lot of games where you drive or move or navigate in relativity to your left and right buttons so let's let's take a game like uh micro machines that game uh, was with a d-pad right back in the day yeah and if i want to go left if i'm facing up i want to go left well then i'll go left both literally and figuratively on screen if uh my car has gone up and turned a corner and is now coming down on the screen left is actually turning it right it's still turning left relative to the car but in my view i'm now going right that's a thing that will throw players at first when you're not used to the controls and you're going to have to play a bunch even just to get the hang of it, right? Right. This yes. game permanently instilled in me the muscle memory to have that. I don't ever struggle with that with any game of any kind. It can be a little driving yes. game. It can be anything. And I and it just, to me, it's intuitive to know, well, I'm, when I'm going this way, I go right. Like, my brain doesn't fart on that at all. And I know people who yeah. really struggle with that. So I have Asteroids to thank for... Uh, that control scheme because without it right. I'm I'm not sure I would I would possess that either you know yeah and no hyperspace in micro machines by the way no just, just, thank the lord yeah, on just, high yeah. um I the other thing I want to say about thrust you mentioned uh, the game or you said something to the effect that the game is about um uh the, the physics inertia. the physics mm-hmm. yeah the physics of inertia and yes. that's the other thing that I love about the game and the history of the game is that no other game at the time anyway was giving me that feeling of Mm-mm. Tap it a little, move a little. You'll drift yeah. and slowly slow. If you're going too fast, turn the ship around, tap it a couple times. You know, maybe the closest to this would be like Lunar Lander had Lunar, that. Yeah, yeah. But that was more gravitational. If that was everything about Lunar Lander. Everything was that. That was the was whole game, yeah. That's fighting true. gravity, yeah. That's true. Yeah. But in this particular case, the the half the fun for me was zooming around and that feeling of like p- precision touch myself into the yes. best drift and then slow it down before I do a thing. And I knew this wasn't like Newtonian actual space physics. I mean, I know. Yes. But I knew enough to know that this was well beyond what games were doing at the time. And and it still to this day kind of this, impresses me when I play it. It's like, wow. Yeah, this was, this was one of the first games that I, I noticed that I was getting into uh, like a, a groove. Like you would just... It, you slow it's like skate skateboarding or anything else like that is you you kind of fall into this groove and like i didn't feel like that in space invaders and different games i felt lunar lander it always felt like abrupt moments it didn't feel like you know you were like going zen you know but that this game you could totally just space out literally um and i think (laughs) it's the reason why some people can play this thing for days because they they basically just tap into uh, t- tap into the the rhythm of it and the motion of it, and they can just predict everything. And later ROMs of this, I'm not sure how much they tweaked the hyperspace, but it did feel like it yeah. that it was tweaked. Maybe I was just getting better. Uh, but uh, it it would it would literally your ship would disappear. It would it would seem like for seconds. You're like, oh, 
is what my ship did this did the game crash yep but what it's doing is it's it's, it's looking for I, i'm assuming it's looking for an opportunity to to respawn in a place that wouldn't get you killed immediately would give you give the player another uh, chance chance yeah that was the idea yeah. and it just was in the beginning anyway and the machines i had in my house so i had two cocktail versions of this in our right. house growing up and i had a stand-up version in the garage and i was a as you might imagine a very popular kid in junior high when these things arrived because they had free play on Everyone mm-hmm. knew my dad it ran arcades. They would all rush to my house to play Asteroids all night. And it's time to play some Asteroids. <laughs> they really did. And it was like I had an Asteroids machine, Missile Command, and like, um, what's the tank one? Um, my brain just died. Uh, tank. What's it called? The uh, Battle Zone. Tank. Oh, Battle Zone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Battle Zone was awesome. That'd so, be awesome. Yeah. These three were always lined up in the garage somewhere as stand ups, and I had the cocktails around, and they were really, really popular. I was not. I thought I had friends. They were all buttholes. <laughs> they just wanted to play. I would, <laughs> kids would come over that would never talk to me otherwise, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Some, some like jock kid or some rich kid or whatever. They'd just be like, hey, um, can I come to your house and, you know, hang out? We could hang out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, we could hang out. You guys are cool, and I'm not that cool. Let's of course. Hang out. And then they would come over, and I'd realize, oh. And because as soon as those machines like went back out to an arcade, they were like right. gone. I never saw those kids again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, unless you, uh, yeah. I can, I can understand that. I douche mean, bags. yeah. So, douchebags, I mean, Brian. Douchebags. They're douchebags. Just say it. They're yeah, douchebags. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I can't say that I didn't go over to my friend's house to play on his Apple II, but I did like We went outside, too. Yeah, so you I touched guess I grass. wasn't such a douchebag. Yeah, you touched yeah. grass with your friend. You went out and did things that weren't just, you know, taking advantage of the yeah. cool video games. No, no, no. We also were friends in, in general. Yeah. But boy, did I like playing with his Mac. Of course. That was or Apple. Excuse me, Apple too. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. So uh, anyway, the point being, um, it was a huge influence for me and everybody around me. Let's talk about Ed Log. You never, oh, go wait, ahead. Yeah, let's talk about Ed Log. He Let's made it. He, did, he programmed it. Lee, Ly, Lyle Rains designed it. Um, yeah. These are your guys. These are your dudes. And uh, yeah. they are famous for this. This game went on to be like so revered. They still study it. It's still like a thing where you go, hmm. So it's like Asteroids. <laughs> or you want to do this like Asteroids. Or, <laughs> it had such a big impact, such a big influence on the industry, which was obviously very young, right? 79. This is yeah. very early uh, in things. And... Um, I just don't think it's enough credit now. Like asteroids yeah. is, and they the, didn't. The I don't. I don't think they realized how big a hit it was. Obviously, because they ended up having to like, uh, they had to pull like uh, other machines to to like lunar lander. They had to pull machines. It was like, we're at, we're at, we're, people still want the asteroids. Mm-hmm. What are we gonna do? Yep. And it's like pull those lunar landers. We're gonna we're gonna ship it out and uh, and and put in some lunar landers. And so, and we're not even gonna talk about it. We're not gonna even talk about it. But. Uh, the um uh, the, there are many other asteroids little spin-off things that happen not just right. Atari 2600 like a commercial at the top of the show but there was an N64 game there was a PlayStation game there were all yeah. these weird versions of of that game we're not going to do those today but just know yeah. that retro gaming is littered with attempts to do a new asteroids like here you go yes. here's some here's a new one hey N64 fans you want some blurry textures and some really shitty looking ships good news Got you covered. Good news. Yeah. Now, Ed Log, this is not our first time we've talked about him. He did do programming, and this was his first game uh, that he did. We've talked about him on Gauntlet. We've talked about, uh, uh, what else did we talk about? We talked about another game that he was involved with, too, was Centipede. That was it. Centipede. Centipede, yeah. Millipede. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's he's legend. That is uh, Ed Log, who did Asteroids. And uh, I'm, I'm curious. I, I've never, I, I meant to go back and really dig deep into what code they were programming in this thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, that'd be super fun to learn. Right. Like, yeah. What would you, I assume it was like assembly or something real basic. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. Basic. Get it. Um, here's here's a picture of him as a very young man standing next to, uh, the gold one. Uh, this is the gold gold one. Yep. Look at that. Look at that screen with the gold. It's pretty cool. You think that's real gold? You think that's no? Uh, you think that's I think real it's, gold around the I think frame it's there? painted. Is what that is. That ain't real. Yeah, it looks like it looks like uh, it looks like they melted down uh, C three PO and uh, yeah, a little turned bit. into an arcade cabinet. Yeah, R two. <laughs> You've got me in trouble for the last time, R two. Um, Rust. But look at that. I used to dress like this when I was a teenager. <laughs> I used to wear what, these what white pants. Did, what? Well, no wonder. No, you didn't have no friends. Yeah, no, <laughs> right. <laughs> Why would they want to hang around with that? No, I love that. This, um, I, we all wore that. That's what you wore. 
Now, this guy's like, a, for his time, especially just like a little super genius man. And uh, I, I really like him. I don't know that much, though, about Lyle Rains. Never really looked into him. Uh, no, I didn't mind too much either. And, you know, I, I learned a lot uh, about actually just that era of the arcade. Because I don't usually go back to 79. A lot of my arcade experience was a little bit later. I, I probably got really big into the arcades about the time they were having trouble. Yeah. Um, and so I was, the stuff I was learning is stuff like some of the first asteroid games, uh, you may have gotten had the, the owl eye coins mm, slots. Mm. I don't know how your arcades have, but you know, most of the arcades I had had the, had the slots. So you just, you took your coin and you dropped it in it slid down through there. Um, and, but they had the old owl, the owl eye ones. Like you would use like it, uh, if you would, Oh, go to, really? Like, you like, put them like, flat, K, like, like you'd go to Kmart and, yeah, yeah. uh, you put in your coins and you, you'd spend smash them against the 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 yeah. ally and you'd like this let it drop like a laundry mat nice. is how that stuff works it was yeah like laundry yeah stuff. yeah so yeah. washing machine yeah, put, yeah so that that was like foreign to me when they were talking about that kind of stuff and i was yeah. like all right okay <laughs> yeah those were the times so we would go down to this store called i'm oh, sorry if you guys hear any weird noises my bathroom's getting built see if you can hear this hold on oh he stopped your bathroom is getting built, so you're adding a bathroom on well we're we had a we have it it's plumbed for it and have had an empty you know unfinished there it is. Here. <laughs> it sounds like a fat guy farting. Anyway, um, my brother-in-law's in town. He does this stuff for Funny, fun. Funny, it's going to sound exactly the same when you get done with it, right? <laughs> yeah, this is good. Yeah, get it. used to that sound because that's what's going to happen. But we're, we've just, for 10 years, we've lived here and we're like, we got to finish that bathroom. We're finally going to do it. Um, so right. when I'm in here playing retro games and I got to, you know, take a take a one or a two, I can just walk over there. A one or two. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Anyway, apologies nice. for that. But uh, the point is, what was my point? My point was, I don't remember. What were you saying? Oh, uh, I know owl, what it was. We were talking about the allies and talking about the difference. Yeah. So when I was when I was in the thick of it, they had switched over to the slot, you know, drop it in, go yeah. down. That had yeah. a better mechanism in terms of its readability and got jammed less. So this right. is a little insider info. My dad used to hate the flat coin ones because the way those yes. mechanisms work would get stuck all the time. And kids would also try to do that trick they'd seen on TV of drilling a little hole in a quarter, <laughs> putting a string on it, drop that down with some fishing string, pull it out and try to get free credits. By the way, rarely worked. It almost only just gummed it up. It's garbage. It's right. terrible. And when you do it with the flat ones, you could get away with it more and jam it more. Then right. the slot ones were changed. So the slot ones still had a jam. They were still capable of jamming, getting stuck, having issues. They were still kind of fiddly. But nothing near as bad as the flat wall coin drop. Yeah. Um, and it's funny. I didn't realize until I was watching these deep dives on this TNT amusement, guys. Um, you know, like the different types of uh, coin uh, collection. Like they would have. Because early on, apparently, I guess you just you drop the coin. I guess it just... It fell wherever it did, like a bucket or something, I suppose, uh, yep. inside the machine. And so if if a, if a technician or, an, uh, you know, you hire some teenager to come run your arcade, he could go in there and, you know, if he had to set something, he could open it up and you'd have access to, you know, a, a bucket of coins just sitting there, you know. Yeah, that's, um, that's basically they, true. They, that's, what would, that's what you'd do. And the way we did yeah. it is uh, yeah. the, the slot ones where you drop it in, they would yes. have a key on the side. You'd open that up, and it used to be that the bucket was much higher and easier to get to if you were a skeevy kid who wanted to steal something. Right. Now you had to go. It was deeper in. This thing was slotted in with these, like, I don't even know how to describe it. They were almost like off-ramps from the coin slots. Yeah, yeah. They went down these metal shafts, almost like air <laughs> air ducts almost. It's like air ducts. It was yeah. crazy. And then they would go down into this box, and that box had another key on it. And the, yeah. you'd have to open that, and then you'd get your money. Um, there's a there's a game in itself for the uh for the arcade owner, right? Yeah, it was I like it was like two factor authentication but physical, you know. <laughs> it's really weird. Um I really I really love watching these videos though. I mean, I I, I we don't talk uh, as much as we did when we first started about arcade games and learn all about the PCB boards and then how all that stuff functions and you know how how many of those probably were shipped with shitty capacitors and shitty power supplies and you know, it was one of the first things a lot of these restoration guys do is they seem to replace that kind of stuff. You know, how are you going to handle all the locking mechanisms like you're talking about? Yeah. Do you, you want to still have that like original or do you want to do a bunch of stuff, change it around? Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's as much art in the preservation of of arcade games because it's not like 
when we go pick up a console and I open it up and I can go look at the schematics, you know, yeah. online, I can pretty much tell you exactly where everything's going to be with, with the exception of revisions and stuff. But for the most part, I know what I'm getting into. The, the arcade machine seemed like it was a little bit of voodoo. Yeah, no, it totally <laughs> like was. I, Not only that, you had a real um, danger when, sorry, he's really drilling. Yeah, he's Holy going to man. town. Well, he must be. He must be uh, drilling the poop shoot, Mister Drill, <laughs> Mister Driller over there. Um, <laughs> no, Driller. but we had this thing. Uh, this is a story I've told somewhere else. Maybe, maybe even here, I don't remember. But my dad. Yeah. Uh, so when you'd open these doors, there were a lot of electronics in these in mechanisms. It wasn't just a simple, like, lever that would hit when the coin went down, and then it would yeah. register as as working. Tons of wires, tons of stuff, electricity all up in this door panel, and so how we got free play at home. You wouldn't do it in the dip switches. Some games did support that, but most didn't. So what you had to do is open the door or keep it unlocked, right. um, right. turn the, the key around so it had like a blocker so you couldn't shut it all the way. So if we ran out of credits, we'd open it up, take your index finger, and the little metal thing that the coins trip, you had to manually go back there and go, and tickle in the, the numbers of things you wanted. The problem with that is he's got me, who's, I don't know, 10 years old or whatever. Right doing this next to extremely high voltage wires. <laughs> I know. And you ever been you ever been around the back of a CRT monitor which some of them were like easily accessible like oh, the yeah. back of those things. Yeah, they were they were crazy. And the and the thing about yeah. it was though uh this time we were at a Pizza Hut and he was emptying quarters from yeah. this Pizza Hut machine and I think it was Pac-Man or something I don't remember. And his back was facing the counter of the Pizza Hut. And they used to have these counters where you'd come in and they would sit you. It's back and you could sit down at a pizza. It was like a regular restaurant. And yeah. um, his back was facing this counter. And this dude had just put two pizzas on the counter for us as just a freebie. It's like, hey, thanks for coming. Here you go. This machine's doing great. We love it. Blah, blah, blah. So they give us free pizza all the time. And right. my dad was like down on his haunches, kind of squatted in front of this thing. And he had the panel down. And he's in there fiddling around. And his left hand touched... Uh, electric stuff in the door panel thing that connected to the transformer and right. it hit him so fast and hard that all I saw was my dad fly out of the back of this arcade machine, slam his back into that counter and knock one of the pizzas into his lap. And oh my it, God. it shocked him that bad. It was like, it was kind of Did he play it off and, and just eat the pizza? We ended up eating the pizza, but his hair was like all over the place. It like stuck out and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like it. It was like a comedy. I got. You. It's like so it was a like cartoon, a dude. It reminded me of some cartoon yeah. or something. But it was uh, yeah. it was a hoot, and uh, I'll never forget it. And the pizza was it amazing. Was it's back when they make good now, pizza. Those were the days. There, it's it's so funny. You know our, our perspective of when you're that age and stuff, and you know getting free pizza and and stuff like that. And I remember whenever we would go to the arcade, and there was always the, the machines are always breaking down. So, you know, that the, the, there's always like one guy walking around the arcade, just keeping everything functioning. Right. And I, Aladdin's Castle, by the way, is where I often went. To oh, yeah. Mall. We had one, too. I and, love that uh, place. It was great. Yeah. So if, if if a machine robbed you for whatever reason, this coin coins not working, coin mechanism not working properly, he'd come over and he'd do it, like you said, he'd take that little that little key and turn it and he'd, he'd pop it open. And he goes, tick, tick, tick. he'd put his finger back there and he'd like tickle it a couple of times. Ding, 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 ding. Just you give it to a little coin sorry. Bing, 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 bing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a good feeling. It's like, oh, that's free shit right there. No, it's that's like magic. Stuff. It's like magic when they yeah. did that. And, they, and all that's yeah. all they're doing is just flicking that little lever. And um, yep. as long as you're smart and knew where it was, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a sex move. But as long as you knew what you were doing, you were fine. You it always looked credits. like the coolest move, though. It was like, ah, oh, this guy's so cool. But was, he was really just my dealer. Let's face it. This he's just your dealer. Really was. He was my dealer. He's making sure you get your hit. Now, here's the other thing about that. People always say, why was there this shift in the mid 80s through today, really, where, yeah. well, actually, today it's more like swiping cards and stuff. But for a long time, there it was a com complete conversion to tokens, token machines, and then putting tokens yeah. in these machines. And it's a simple answer. Here's why they did it. Even the nickel cade that I go to where I pay a little fee to get in and then I can just get big wads of nickels. Right. The point is that the place controls the coins, not you bringing them in from the outside because... For bringing them from the outside meant, and this is all stuff I learned through this process. You right. would have, you couldn't, you couldn't guarantee the 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 condition of a quarter. So some of them are are uh, had been rubbed down too much from being in the same pocket for too long, or whatever, and they wouldn't have the same uh, <laughs> shape, so it wouldn't register right. That would be one yeah. problem. The other problem would be you had old gum on your quarter, 
and it yeah, was sticky yeah. and awful, and that jammed up in there, and now the the whole mechanism's jacked, and you got to have somebody come in and fix it. And in that case, it was my dad fixing it. And so, yeah. because you couldn't control the condition of quarters to go in, that's right. why the the whole token thing even happened. That's the whole point because the machine is so full you're of telling coins. me, yeah, it's not because they were trying to get me to leave the arcade with coins in my pocket that I never spend. No, that's a side effect and to them a benefit, but that wasn't the original right. point. The original, I mean, that's what's great about uh, capitalism is you figure out ways to screw people after you've solved a problem, right? <laughs> so what they right, did, right. It, it was literally like, and they did it in other ways too. I'll get to that in a second, but it was to say that, well, we control, control the coins, therefore we're not going to have the jams, we're not going to have less people have yeah. to employ, like all this savings of time and people and money. And it worked. Then they yeah. started going, hmm, well, if they, hmm. they don't finish that, that means they'll have to come back here. And when they're here, they'll probably oh buy God. more because they're right here. Okay, so there's that one bit. And you see it now in microtransactions. Like, for four ninety nine, buy enough gems to do a thing. Oh, but I'm short two gems. I guess you got to spend another five ninety nine to get enough gems. Like, all of these kinds of ways we nickel and dime people in gaming today, they have their yeah. roots in this shit. For real. Yeah. The other thing you know, they I, did, I was, yeah, go ahead. I was I was lucky to get in and out for the most part uh, before the whole coin slide t- uh, ticket system stuff really took hold. Uh, m- most of what I remember is going in and you know taking. It was like if you bought five dollars worth of tokens, then right. you would get this many tokens. It was actually a greater value than mm-hmm. if you had right. just a dollar at a time. Mm-hmm. If you put twenty dollars, it was even a greater savings. Mm-hmm. And so I would go in there and slap my little twenty in there and the thing would go tuk, 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 whole bunch of coins. And you'd like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Next time you open your phone and you see an app say best value nine ninety nine for the most gems or whatever. Yeah. Just know that yeah. that's kind of where that started. And that helped with the transition in fact, I think even our arcade, my dad owned it. I think we did this for a while where when we got the tokens happening, we would give you five tokens for a dollar, like you were yes. saying. So you get five of these tokens, and in people's mind, they're like, it's like an extra quarter. And it oh, kind of is, I'm rich. but you still gave us a dollar, and we gave you five <laughs> fake coins that cost less than a dollar. You know what I mean? Like it was this weird yeah. mind game. And uh, yeah, yeah. and then we just kind of went. And out we know there. where you're gonna spend them. Yeah, we know where you're gonna spend them tokens. Yeah, we right know what you because you have nowhere else to go. And if you were a chain, yeah. cool, you'd go to another location. But it was the same same issue. Yeah. yeah. Um. This this nickel cave that we go to, they're actual nickels. But again, they they maintain the the source of nickels. So <laughs> you could bring nickels from the outside, but who's carrying around nickels? Nobody. No one has Nobody. a bunch of nickels, right? So what you would do, it kind of has the same ex- effect now. So if I go to the nickel cade in West Valley and I put a bunch in there and I walk away with like another 10 nickels, I'm not using those for anything else until I go back to that place. That's right. So it's, it's like so tokens it's all over again, man. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't have any of those old tokens, Taz, uh, Taz. I wish I did. Oh, man, do I wish I had that stuff. Oh, one of, our, one of our, uh, our, our faithful here, one of our friends of the show, sent me a, a whole butt ton of Aladdin's Castle tokens. Oh, that would be new, awesome, fresh. dude. I would love you know, that. I have, to, I, have to break, I have to break them out one day and show you how sweet they are. They're mint. They're mint. Ours were, I don't even remember the name of Arcade, American Amusement, whatever it was. And it had right. our own logo crap on it. The only thing I really salvaged, this is so sad. Just thinking about it pisses me off. But I really only salvaged three things from that entire era. Because I've told, have I told the story about when my dad died, he had a whole, like, yeah. five storage places. Yeah, and they were big, complete yeah. stand-up machines, all custom built, brand new CRTs in them, gone. Somebody auctioned them, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, just makes me sick. But I have yeah. a sit-down cocktail in that room. It doesn't work, but it's an old... Um, uh, uh, oh, shit. Not Galaga. Um, the one, uh, Moon Cresta. Moon uh, two-sided, you know, cocktail model. And then the one he custom-built out of wood, I've shown you pictures before. I have that yeah. in the garage. That's got, like, Kamikaze 3 or some hacked ROM in it. I'm going to wipe... I'm going to clear that thing out and actually do something with it, but... I've got those two things, and then the header art for Lock and Chase that I designed as a 14-year-old. I have one of those. I would have had 300 of them if I knew about the storage units, because that's the (laughs) game that we got stuck with when everything crashed. But I have that over here somewhere, and that's it. You're you're lucky that... Yeah, I know as much regret as you have. You're lucky that it was handled for you. You you. You had a lot of living to do between 
then and now. Oh, man. plus it was two thousand. The year was the year two thousand. My dad passed away, and yeah, had I known about it, we would have tried to do something. But I don't know if I was even in the mental place to like know how to organize no. that or deal with it. Today, no problem. Yeah, I'd be like yeah, no eBay, freaking. I'm gonna take five of them myself. I'm gonna make custom ones. You start. I, you I, start a YouTube channel. Oh, about hell Scott's yeah! Giant collection of warehoused. Yeah, we do a huge machine. series on this. We give shit away to our listeners. Like right now, right. perfect time. But that didn't exist in 2000. I wasn't doing that. No. So no. it's a bummer, but it, it's it is what it is. And I'm really glad I have the 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 bits that I have, and got a lot of old pictures and crap like that. I should share more of those, but um. But yeah, it's uh, it's it was a weird, it was a weird yeah. time, dude. Now let's dive into Dave Shepard's life. Dave Shepard, you're like, wait, I don't know who that is. Well, good oh, news, Dave Shepard. He the made guy a behind Asteroids Deluxe, right? He, yeah, he made a better Asteroids, in my opinion, and it sounded like this. <laughs> now you might hear that and go, did he though? Because <laughs> some they, of those, but some, isn't this the same? Aren't yeah. those sound effects kind of annoying compared to the other ones? Like, let's do a direct comparison just for fun here. So that's the shooting in this. Here it is in this. Like I, I kind of miss the original sounds. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were do, better. Do you know we've talked about this guy before? Have we talked about Dave Shepard? Shepard? Yeah, Bri Shepard. Uh, briefly. Uh, Area Fifty One. Remember doing that one? Uh, yeah, the game, the shooter game with the gun. Yeah, 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 a little shooter game. That's right. Yes, this is that guy. So he, same guy. Oh my gosh, same well, guy. Let's talk about Asteroids Deluxe. This game came out. Now I don't. The problem with capturing video of this is very hard because part of the upgrade for it visually was twofold. Know, One, guy. the asteroids moved; they rotated, <laughs> right. um, and the background. It the game was was projected. So I had a mirror. It's so hard to explain how this worked. It had a mirror image of what looked like a space, some space art. And in the yes. space art was like half of a planet and a little curve of a moon and uh, other debris and nebula colors and that kind of thing. And it, it gave this like weird three-dimensional look to everything as if this game was being played in that space. But that was just art being projected with a mirror on or I, I'm sorry, it was the mirror, right? And then yeah, the you're you're right. So yeah, so it, I I had to dig into it because it got very confusing about exactly what was going on. There's there, the CRT is mounted uh, in the bottom of the arcade machine, kind of flat, right? And then there is a two way mirror um, that is facing the player, and that's kind of angled a little bit so that it you can see the CRT that's laying flat, and behind that two way mirror is like a cardboard painting of of asteroids so when you try to emulate this you're just gonna see uh you're just gonna see the 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 lines the vector lines right uh but arcade you would see that now there's some there's some emulation out there that has went an extra mile and has added back the, the the graphics in the back in the background there's like some a more recent versions that you can purchase and buy that that adds all that stuff back to it so it it looks like that i want well, the thing i was kind of confused about is there's a couple explanations of exactly how it looks like the original one we talked about is is pretty much just all white vector lights right? Right, right this one apparently had like a transparent either had a transparent film of blue or used a black light i'm not sure if those both existed but i've heard people say about both ways but essentially what you're trying to do is create a instead of like a white light, kind of a blue uh, a light. And it was much brighter as because as, you could make it brighter, right? Instead yeah, yeah. Of, it was much was brighter. Warm. I remember had settings on the dip switches where you could really crank it up and they almost were neon right. at, at some point when we had one. It's like a neon yes. white. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, it was really cool. It also had these like homing ship things that you could blow up. They weren't uh, asteroids. They were like these weird geometric shapes and then the shapes would chase you. Um, yeah. So they mix that they're, sort of stuff up quite a bit. Still had call, some of the. I call them the Borg, but they're called something else. But I, I call them the Borg because they come down. They're big cube ship. They're made up of uh, diamond shapes, and yep. you shoot it, and then the diamond shapes chase you, and they get they get smaller yet again when you shoot those. And very asteroids like, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole thing's very asteroids like, but the way they follow you is actually kind of a cool. <laughs> it's kind of freaky. I don't like it. I don't like being followed yeah. by a ship. Um, but it That's has the same the old, they have the same old big fat ship that comes out and shoots randomly. It's not much of a shot, but then the little one's very good and fast. And for the yes. most, for the most part, it sticks to these ideas. And you're right. This one had a shield rather way than hyperspace, more useful. way more useful, way, way, way. way. Yeah. The, Dave Shepard, well done. Uh, F the other guys for their bad idea. 
Right. And I, I like I like the shield because it, it, it's, it's I, I'm trying to remember the shield responds differently uh, in different situations. I think if you get if you pull up the shields at the very last second uh, before an asteroid hits you, it actually hit, knocks you back. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that is cool that it knew to do that because I couldn't think of any other instance in the game that already had that physics in it. So I was like, oh, so they must have programmed this to, to you know, make use of that collision Mm -hmm. interesting yeah imagine imagine pushback in a game like now you don't even think about it that's just a thing you see in games there's a hitbox there's like a feeling of uh a momentum and inertia like you say uh action reaction this game was able to tap into that feeling without really having to tell us we just kind of felt it Mm -hmm. and both these games are like that but this one in particular i felt like just really added something to it and it's not that common, not today anyway, where someone will take over a project and improve so well on what the previous designer did. But I feel mm-hmm. that way about this game. I think this yeah. is a superior game. I have many positive feelings for the OG Asteroids, but I don't know. There's something about this one. I, I would I would actually rather put my quarters in if they're next to each other. I'd just rather play it. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. It's just, it, the playability is better. However... Um, you like me probably played a later ROM version of this because the first ROM they came out with, they were trying to, they were trying to fix all the things they saw in the first one. And one of the things that they didn't care for is how good people got at the original one. Yeah, so yeah. they, they didn't want people hanging around. So they made it a hell of a lot harder. Yeah. Um, and, Re- that and remember that was the, uh, this is the game <laughs> where at that time where what's the goal of arcades, it's to bleed yeah. your po- pocket dry. That's the goal. So yes. we like it or not, nostalgia or not, they were always trying to up that. <laughs> I was like, well, how do yeah. we keep them with one quarter and play less and then have to put two in? Like, this is the thinking of an arcade owner and a, and a arcade game maker. And they did that. This game's a lot harder. And it even, even talks about it. Um, did, I send, did I send you that link? I watched a video that was basically the marketing material they sent to the arcade owners. And they talked about it. It was very skeezy. It felt so skeezy to listen to us, like to make sure that your people don't stay on it too long and maximize profits and stuff. And I was like, wow, you guys were real shits. I mean, I knew it, but I never heard you say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, and it was like, ah, I don't think I like that. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, this, this, they, they released, uh, uh, some revisions very shortly after the first release because it was just way too hard. People were, you know, it's like, well, I just won't even play it. And, they were they were i think this is the time weren't they weren't they starting to do the oh this is the time when they started uh, preparing uh users that we were going to be going to two coins yeah uh for gameplay so you could actually uh you could double up and i get i think get extra play if you went ahead and put two coins if you put in, two coins in you got extra ships immediately yeah 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 so they were they were working towards training. They talked about this in the video too. They talked about uh, training your uh, your uh, customers to get used to the idea of of using two coins. Yeah. Like, oh, you bastards! You dirty bastards! No, it you really was. It, it was just, no matter what, you got to remember this era and these things. This is this was a business. NBA Jam famous yeah. for being, you know, seems like you're doing awesome until the last four minutes of the game, and then suddenly <laughs> the computer is superhuman. Like that wasn't yeah. anything that you could help. It was the business model kicking in. Yeah. And it's frustrating because as a kid, I didn't think about that. I wasn't thinking about that at all. I just was like, where no. can I get a quarter, mom? And it and it reminded yeah. me, that's what kids do when they play Fortnite or they're in... You know, that's not a good example. That's mostly uh, cosmetics. But when right. they're in a game like, uh, I don't know, some gotcha game that they're super hooked on on their phones, and they're like, mom, can I have five bucks? That's like what we were doing. And they weren't thinking about the business model. They don't know any better. And so I, yeah. I'm always a little, I think it's important to talk about that stuff because it can be predatory and, and, and annoying. Yeah. Um, oh, this guy must have a cheat on because he just bounced off that rock and didn't die and use his thing. Oh, no, did he use his shield at the very last second? He might have. Like it didn't look yeah. like it. I if, don't know. If, you're, if you're really good, because the shield only lasts for so long. Yeah, that's the point um, of it. It's so, a super. You got to yeah. time it, or else you're. It's stupid. You got to. Yeah. Know what so you're doing. he's probably he's probably a really good player and just very conservative. He probably knows exactly when to hit it, and it probably just barely even shows up, just enough to trick the machine. Yep. Uh, into letting it play a little bit longer. Now let's get into a weird era. Uh, 1987 rolls around. Uh, we got a designer named Ed Rotberg and Peter Lipson, who's the programmer. Rotberg. These guys come along and they go, "Hey, time to revive uh, asteroids and bring it to the modern day." And what you ended up with is weird. Um, yeah, it is a yeah. game called Blasteroids, not just Blasteroids. You did, you did it right because it's so hard. I, like I wanted to call it 
Blastroids. It's blaster. But there, isn't, there is an E in between that blast and roids. Right? Yeah, it's like uh, it's like short for blasting your hemorrhoids is what it is. Yes. Anyway, it's, it's, they just put a BL at the start of, of asteroids. It is a very I mean, weird take. Now, this is lettuce. it's also listen to the sound and you'll go, oh, this era of Atari. I'll, I'll play a bit. I mean, this sound chip, they used it for everything. Marble Madness, 720. We talked about half these games. I mean, listen to that. That's like the same sound library as half those games. <laughs> anyway, that's firing. Yeah. And the explosions of that drum noise. Um, Blastroids is an interesting bag because I actually really like this game, but I don't consider it an Asteroids game. I consider it a weird, a well, weird it's, experiment. First of all, it's no longer vector. It's, uh, it's raster graphics, raster, right? Yep. yep. Pre-rendered raster I mean, graphics, I should mention. So these rotating looking images of a mm-hmm. blast, uh, an asteroid of a Blastroid. Um <laughs> Is, uh, right. is, a, is a little pre-rendered roll animation that they just repeat over and over. Yeah. And, it, and it works. I mean, it's fine. Visually, it's kind of cool. Um, but it's it's, it's weird. It's six, it's, this is six years after Deluxe, right? Yeah. So it's like, would you say 87, you said? Is that when this is? This was 87, started, correct. Yep. 87. So six years after. So we had one year. We only had one year between Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe. They just improved upon it. Wanted to get, capture the, you know, capture a little more money. Uh, and here it's like many years later, and we've we've moved well past the simple geometrics of, uh, you know, of the vector graphics of the first one. And we've got we've got energy conservation, so you got to like blow up asteroids and, and collect energy uh, because you can transform your ship into three different forms. Yep. Um, you know, you got one that's kind of fast, one that's kind of fat and slower, but has better shield. One that's got better uh, better firepower. And all of that consumes energy in different ways. Plus, you have an automatic shield. So if you like run into something, it might bump you across the screen. And once your shields deplete, and of course you get destroyed. Uh, more complex uh, shooting and scoring. Uh, you're still shooting larger meteors and making them smaller. And there's still ships that come in. But you also have this overworld where you're mapping through like uh, sectors. So it's laid out in like a grid and you, you have to, you can kind of choose a path, but you basically have to clear all of the grid before you get to right. a boss You just battle. get to choose which, where you start on the grid and go next. And yeah, but it's still, right. you still have to clear it all to get to the boss. And the boss is like the first one anyway, is that big the green is, thing, whatever that is. The boss is great. He's like, I think he's, he's like this big, he's like a bigger asteroid and he's got goofy eyes and he's got, he's got like asteroid shooter pods on him like it yep. looks like he's creating all the asteroids if i'm not mistaken yeah he's lord like he, he's like lord asteroids he makes the asteroids yeah, he just he's just crapping them out yep <laughs> here's an asteroid enjoy yeah like he's weird as hell and and the whole vibe of the game is actually pretty weird but there's a ton yeah. of variety the only real complaints i have about control wise is the medium and large ships have the physics momentum the inertia the t- yeah. little teeny fighter ship has none and it and it really to me that is annoying because it's like Right. Well, I was just moving kind of cool. Now I'm a little ship, and while I have more bullets, I move weird, and so I have to retrain my head to go, you're not going to drift. You're going to stop like on yeah. a dime with that thing. Um, but it did have power-ups that you were unique. unique. It had ways of of getting more energy because you needed – oh, that's the other thing. You needed energy. Um, yeah, and if you yeah. ran out of energy, you were toast, so you had to always grab oh, these little so energy balls. so aggravating because if you get really close to a, sec- a sector, uh-huh. if you get really close to finishing it, and you get a little t- you get a little warp at the very end. So you've cleared the screen, but you have to still fly to the warp. Yeah. And it's so frustrating if you clear everything, the warp shows up so you can warp to the next sector and you can't quite make it. Yep. You, you sputter along and you just go poop. It's also got one of my least favorite things in any video games, and this includes modern ones. I can't stand games yeah. where a tutorial point yeah. stops everything dead in its tracks and makes you read yeah. it and won't let you skip it. I in hate arcade it, especially. Yeah, no, you get into the arcade, you put your quarter in, you play your game. The first thing, big, when you get yeah. your first little uh, uh, energy ball, you'll hit it, and right. everything stops and goes. Uh, you need energy to do shit, and then you get a wane. Yeah, yeah. And then it'll finally yeah. fade away and go away, and now you're back to action. Fine, but the next time I go to the arcade, I got to do that every time. I got I play this game every time. Yeah, yeah every time because it, is, it don't know you. It it's, doesn't know that you're. No, you know, it, it doesn't sucks. have those save states. It doesn't I, doesn't know I who hate this that. is. Really bugged me. We haven't even talked about. 
that was probably one of the biggest thing about asteroids. Totally forgot to mention it. I mean, the first asteroids, one of the biggest things they had was the ability to do the top 10 scores with the three right. letter initials. Uh, and so people love that crap. It's like, oh, competition. And it, the top three scores, I think, on asteroids or might have been asteroids deluxe uh, are, are, are perma saved essentially. So even if you lose power, uh, you still have those top three. So, but the top 10 could get. You could like the bottom, the bottom seven of the top ten. Yeah, it's like George's uh, Frogger machine. He's trying to get across the street on batteries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. We it was the yeah. only way we could, unless they put a little chip, a little memory thing in there. We had yeah. no way of of saying of of flexing forever. You know. Yes. We were just screwed. We would be like, oh, I promise I got the high score on Frogger. Well, where is it? Well, I don't know. They must have yeah. shut it off. That was the life we lived, dude. Yeah. There was no good permanent like. Oh, look at this guy I, just shitting out asteroids. Oh, yeah, this is just the guy. He's just, he's just shitting out asteroids. He's he's this weird looking green guy, and he's just what is it a space wolf? What is he <laughs> like? Uh, he is, dude. I love it. Oh, there it is. That's another the, tutorial. Thank you. Okay, oh, and pause you gotta, everything. Oh, you got to oh. shoot his little. You got to shoot his little meteor pods. Then you get sucked into the warps. I forgot about that. When you first start the uh, blastroids, the first thing you got to do is choose your uh, difficulty level. Yep. So this has got a lot of stuff. We've learned a lot of stuff since 81 and, and you know, adding stuff to games. And Pretty stuff, inventive, so. though. Like, this kind of an open-world yeah. mission structure, this didn't exist before yeah. this. So, you know, no, it didn't. I'll give it credit. I think it deserves yeah. it. Yeah. Bad, bad thing is, you've probably never played this on a, at the arcade. There was only 2,000 of these made. Yeah. It did terrible. They have one in that uh, ve the Vegas place we do our arcade competition for TMS Vegas yeah. every year. They have one. It was broken last yeah. time, but they usually have one there. <laughs> you, you may know. have played it elsewhere. You may have emulated it. There may be. I, I can't remember. If, I didn't see it in any collections anywhere, but I'm not saying it's not. It's out on my, uh, it, it shipped with my Ambernick. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. on there. That ROM was, I, yeah. I should say. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, did you see the leaked uh, the leaked SP version of the Ambernick, by the way? Did you see I did. So the if you haven't seen Ambernick, the RG thirty five double X, the one that we've been using for yeah. a couple of years now, had a couple upgrades. Last year we got a plus, which added Wi Fi, and now there's a new twenty twenty four model that just came out. And uh, now they've announced, uh, kind of following up with MiU, uh, recently announced a clamshell type. SP Nintendo SP type. So yeah. now yeah. Amber Nick is on is on board as well. So when this thing comes out, I'm ordering immediately. Just like I said about um, the me, no hesitation. I will be getting that thing. You gotta get it, and you gotta take care of it because the hinge is gonna be shit. These people that have <laughs> small teams, you're of people so hard. You are so things. convinced that the hinge is gonna be bad. I hope it's not. It, but it's, it's gonna it's gonna work but it's not going to be durable. It takes yeah. a lot of research to make a good hinge. And I just don't, as, as fast as Amber Nick moves with all these new devices they bring out and no more than they really sell. It's a kind of a small market. Uh, I don't think they're going to have the research in it to make a reliable hinge. I yeah. just don't think it's going to happen. So you're going to have to get this thing. You have to be real careful with it. And yeah, it's going to be great, though. Yep. I can't wait. To I can't wait either. We don't have a date yet, though. It got leaked, so we don't no. know anything about that. Yeah. Um, again, another quick mention of uh, YouTube's TNT Amusements Incorporated. Please follow that channel. They got rad restoration yeah. stuff, arcade machine stuff. Um, the, those people are so fun, too. It is like, you know, we talked about here. If we had enough money, we would start our own, you know, arcade retro thing and that's kind of how these guys are it kind of reminds me of all those shows that you used to see on uh what is the uh what's the what's the one with the where, where they it's, it's a pawn shop it's probably oh, pawn stars uh, pawn stars is the one you're thinking of yeah, yeah. it reminds me of that kind of charm without all the assholery yeah. um so they're they're fun and they kind of walk through stuff and they kind of give you the stories of you know the restorations and that kind of stuff and it's 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 Really great personalities, a bunch of fun people over there. That's awesome. Uh -huh. One other little uh, reminder, too, if you want to emulate it, great. These games we've talked about today, you can. You can get them in real arcades, of course. Plenty of Asteroids 1 cabinets out there, and Deluxe for that matter. Um, yeah. However, if you're like, well, what's modern that I can play? So uh, uh, Atari themselves put out a game called Asteroids Recharged. This was part of a series yes. of recharged, quote-unquote, uh, versions nice. of old game types that they were famous for. And there's a couple of these floating around. This is one that I picked up. Uh, runs mm -hmm. wonderfully on a Steam Deck. And it has yes. uh, a couple of modes. One in particular is a classic mode that just plays like Asteroids. You'll swear this is just Asteroids with a with a pretty 
face. Neon looking stuff. Yeah. 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 But, um, and way better sound effects. Like I got a little audio here. Oh, that's the, hold on. Yeah. No, that, that's it. There we go. Oh, the God, that sounds so good. Yeah. It's, an, it's got a nice vibe to it. Um, this is a thing that is available now for very cheap. I want to say I bought my, bought it for like five bucks. Yeah. Um, it is looks like they, even though it looks really different, they they stuck to a lot of true things. Like only, oh, well, they just had a power up. Well, not this mode. They, so this is the full mode right. where you get power ups and you get crazy shots, and you yeah. know it's a little closer yeah, to what shit. Blastroids did. And you'll do things that are insane, like just rapid fire machine gun things like that. Yeah. But that's this mode. If you play the classic mode, you'll just you play, only have four bullets on screen at a time. Correct. I think. Yeah. None yeah, of this. Okay. None of this horse shit. Like he's doing now with like this big spread <laughs> that, that he's doing. Awesome. It's really fun. Don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for that classic yeah. experience, it actually does a really good job of capturing yeah. that. And uh, I highly this recommend is, it. It's very good. This is kind of more like Deluxe because uh, Deluxe allows you, we didn't talk about that, but you do have power ups, ships, and stuff. So you kind of something here, not nearly this outrageous, though. Yeah. And they had, these kind of power They had power ups in uh, the other, or in Blastroids. The as Deluxe. Well. Yeah. Blastroids, yeah. 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 Both of them did. This is just way more, and it's uh, like I said, cheap, available. They got a bunch of games that they did this to, that are all rad. Uh, right. I recommend all of maybe them. Maybe you got it wrong. Maybe particular. you're right. Blastroids maybe only had the one to power us. I didn't mean to back up on that. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I didn't want to state that incorrectly. Well, you don't want people to rush out and buy a, a cabinet on eBay and find out there's no. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Brian yeah. lied. Brian. Uh, Brian. Brian's guy, a big fat liar. The guy on Twitter lied. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's very cool. Go play it. Go find it. It's on Steam. It's on uh, consoles. It's on phones, I think. Uh, it's called yeah. uh, Asteroids Recharged. And it's very cool. Yeah, there's several. Uh, yeah, watch for the recharge stuff. All, all of it I've had so far has been good. Well. All the recharge things. There you go. Asteroids. Watch out for them. Now this. Destroy it. Whoop. Destroy it. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that was a glitch. Uh, we're going to talk chicken. about uh, <laughs> guessing our game. Wait, where's my ex-chicken? Ex-chicken. There it is. Um, we're we're going to... Uh, <laughs> what was I saying? We're going to watch... Um, or we're going to do a game. We're going to play a game. We're going to try to guess each other's game. It's called Guess My Game. And I'm going to talk about a game first, about a platform and a year. And then Brian's going to choose from five answers which one is correct. All right, Brian? Here is the sound of my game that was on the arcade machines. It was in the arcade. It's a terrible way of saying it. Uh, and the year was 1991. Are you ready? Yes. Give me the arcade 1991, Scott. 91 arcade. Here we go. All right, wing, wing. there's your idea, and you can listen to as right. much as you want, but here are your options. Again, 91 yeah. Arcade, we have A, Dragon Saber, right. uh -huh. B, Sunset Riders, right. C, Street Fighter II, The World Warrior, Ooh. or D, Escape Kids. You made that last one up, right? No, that's a real game. Escape Kids. Might be this game. Where are they, where are they escaping from? Uh, I'm not telling you. You don't get to know. <laughs> A, they, Dragon Saber, B, Sunset Rider, C, Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior, D, Escape Kids. I am going to get rid of Escape Kids. I don't believe it's that. Uh, Dragon Saber, pretty sure it's not that. It's going to be B or C, Sunset Riders, or Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior. It sounds like Sunset Riders because it's a game I've played before, wherever you're playing. I don't even remember playing Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior. So I'm going to go with B, Sunset Riders. Is it B, Subset Ri or Sunset Riders? Let's find out. Judges, is it? That is correct, Brian. That yeah. is correct. Uh, that is Sunset Riders, and it is an awesome game if you've never played it. Uh, Sunset Riders. If I would have given, I would have given it away if I'd have said, um, if I'd have played the very first part of the intro because it sounds like an old spaghetti western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's 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 very recognizable, and I've like I said, I played a ton of this game. I think I have, have that we right. Talked about Sunset Riders. On your Whoa, hold on, let's see if I have this. Is this it? Oh yeah, listen to this intro. You got it. You got it. Oh, it's so awesome. Yeah, love it. See this whole uh, bit? See, that would have been too easy. Too freaking easy. Yes, it would have been. All right, yep. tell me about yours. What do you got? Uh, I'm a few years before you. Still at the arcade, though. Arcade games are always good to listen to. Now, this game also made it to other systems, but that's just a little extra tip. You're welcome. 
Uh, but this was at the arcade, the one I did uh, audio for, and it's from 1988, about three years before uh, your your game, which is a sexy game, sexy game, sexy game. Writers, but, All right, yeah, mine's 1988 though. All right, 88. Uh, let's play it, and then we'll hear my choices. Here we go. Play it. Why aren't you playing? Your choices. Yeah, tell me my choices. What do we got here? Are going to be A, tubing, B, 88 games, C, power drift, D, truxton. I think that's tubing, but let me think about it for a second. Also, that 88 games sound. is known as uh, Konami Games 88, I think. Uh... So that's when you spin a guy around on a tube, I think. I think this is tubing. Is it tubing? Are you thinking it's grubin tubing? It's grubin tubing. And not, and not Truxton? Are you sure? Not Truxton. I don't okay. even know what that is. All right. <laughs> what is it? Is it? Is it tubing? It's tubing. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's that It's that blah, 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 blah thing. That's what gives it away for blah, me. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah I almost went with the second. That was the first song. And I almost went with the second one. I said, ah, that's kind of unfair. He might be able to get the tubing thing. I didn't want to make it too hard. Right. No, look, tubing, I was a huge fan of tubing. I played that game, yeah. put quarters in that Tubin's thing. Fun. I thought tubing was great. So it was immediately sounded familiar. And also they had that fake water sound, which I sort of picked up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, oh, this is, I'm actually showing Sunset Riders. I'm meant to be showing tubing. Sunset Riders, which is a great looking This game. art, dude, is so dumb. I freaking love yeah. it. So freaking much. So good. Uh, Steve. The whole, yeah. <laughs> and Bob. <laughs> Anyway, um, there you go. That's uh, we both did good. Yeah, did no, good. Nobody lost. Uh, well, you didn't get this. Aren't we good? Oh, that's too bad. Nobody won that, or nobody got that. Nicely done, everybody. Yeah, We're also going to now hear some feedback from people. Welcome to the, to the treasure room. room. All right. Uh, quick. Um, looks like a text here from Jeff M. Jeff M. wrote in. Uh, he's also known as Mouse Divided. On oh, the, uh, Mouse Divided. I like that. Isn't That's that a great name? name? Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I like that. Anyway, he wrote into 801-471-0462 and said, some asteroids trivia in the subject. Something I learned in my mathematics education journey is that asteroids is played on something called a flat torus. A torus oh. is a topological surface resembling a donut or bagel mm -hmm. that has a lot of mathematical properties used in chemistry and physics. The bagel-like shape explains how the ship in asteroids appears on opposite sides of the screen with the same trajectory as it disappears. This screen side swapping phenomenon would be very different if the playing space were a sphere or simply a rectangle. Love the show, Jeff. Interesting. I had no freaking idea that that was the case. Perhaps that was why I had a donut joke in the beginning of my intro. Oh, know. perhaps that's why you did. Uh, Taurus spelled T-O-R-U-S chat room, not like the car. Not T A R or T A U R U S. Yeah, no, uh, that's crap. This is like, mm, but yeah, I used to love. I, I think that was the first game. The Asteroids is the first game that I recognized that your your character felt like it was free flight, go anywhere. It could go anywhere. Yep. There was there was no edge of screen because you would just whoop. You yep. pop another area. Yep. And real quick, for those who don't know what this looks like, if you've done any three D modeling, I'll pull up an example. Yeah. Well, there it is, right there. Um, you often start with these. They're called primitives, and this is one of the primitives. Mm -hmm. You start with a ring, and you yep. build something on top of it or part of it or whatever, and that's called a torus. I did know that. Well, that I didn't call it a donut. I knew that, but I didn't know that that's how the game was organized. But it makes I, sense. Yeah. The bullet would go. So I'm looking at this roundness, right? So let's just pull this up. Yeah. You see the bullet go. It wraps immediately, and then they speed up the process of it reappearing on the other side. But that way, the trajectory is dead on on the other side. This is a much better explanation than what I read. Do you, <laughs> the, 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 Jeff M, you nailed it. Do you this think, is, uh, do, is Pac Man that as well? Because Pac Man also comes across the other side. Is that also a big Taurus? Oh, well, you know, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, curious about no, that's that. That's a good question. Curious. Let us know. Curious, uh, and curious. Uh. You know what I like? Smart listeners. That's what I like. Smart. More of those, please. Uh, if you if send us your own smart thoughts at 801-471-0462, you can email us at playretroshow at gmail.com. 
It's time for this. Ludicrous kill. It's time for the Unreal Report. If you, at least I think we are, are we playing tonight? Are we doing a little UT, UTK4 tonight? Time that, that's the question. What do you think? Well, I mean, I want to play, but I don't know what everyone else is doing. I mean, well, let's uh, see how the schedule looks and let's start hitting some people up and find out. All right, we'll find out. But anyway, um, any, I wasn't sure with Easter weekend and everything. I wasn't sure if anybody had, like, if anyone was around. Like, yeah, I don't. And that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I would well, love to, sure. but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to force myself on yeah. others. We'll see what happens happens yeah. uh but anyway Not tell me yet. what's going on were, were any big shakeups in the uh top tens or anything hey that's a great question so let's take a look we did play a little bit of unreal tournament 99 this past monday me and amy and scott fletcher stopped by uh it, it, it fell through he did something else and then scott johnson had the monday shows he's got a bad case of the monday i got a bad case of the monday um, shows that, yeah only thing that really happened is i'm still ahead of you <laughs> um, and Zio has moved into number six. They were pretty much is locked in at the top five. At top five is Sikreki, Upright Knight, Flap Jackson, Denier, and Surge. And Zio has uh, went ahead of me and you both. And so me and you were sitting at, at seven and eight. That's a bunch of crap. And I played Monday. What's my excuse? Yeah, well, I you, got you got none. But look at this 2K4 thing. I bumped up a spot. I'm now fourth, right? I think. Let's see. Uh, you, two, Third. Four, you Third. are up to you were up to three somehow. I don't know how you did it. I don't know if you played off uh, when nope. I wasn't playing or if I just sucked it. It was just last week. It's just our last game, and I I was uh, I played. Oh, that's them. right. You were. Oh, there was definitely one round, if not several, that you just dominated on. Sick Recky number one. Try to kill everyone. Number two. Scott at three with frog pants. Four. Brack Flack and Brian Shock Effect at number five. Still in the top five myself don't i don't know how i catch up because look at this okay so try to kill everyone is is reachable i can do that that's about 200 points uh score higher i can do that sick recce though 2118 freaking f that about it's secrecy by the way but we do call it sick we call him sick recce yeah or she it's a she right and we determine right that that, that, i don't know i'm just i'm saying the person the individual who plays sick yeah uh, secrecy or sick recce is all i'm ever going to say sick Sick recce yeah here's the thing they've been playing about almost the exact amount of time i've played almost yeah. just barely over that and they're almost one and a half well, times higher on the no i'm sorry they're not double my score what are they they're, yeah they're more than double my score secrecy um does have a uh an achilles heel what's that? uh the the it, it is if 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 it's a simple map like facing worlds yeah everything kind of becomes even but if it's a complex map uh, they they rock it because they have a really good memory for the maps. Yeah, they know so all the hot points, the choke points, yeah. the objective stuff, all that. You're right. That is a thing. Yes. She, she, he, they absolutely destroyed us on assault maps. Just wrecked yeah. us. Wrecked us. Sick wrecked us. But when we played like, uh, although they ended up pulling it out on the, in the end of that of that Facing Worlds game and right. broke the tie, but, that, but on Facing Worlds, I felt like I had a chance. <laughs> I felt like I had a chance. Yeah. So freaking that was great. sick that was... recce, dude. Gosh dang it. Yeah. Dang it. I refuse to say it. secrecy. I'm only gonna say sick recce until I beat them. That's right. And then and then I will show you the respect you deserve. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to play with us or are curious about this or just want to get into the yes. 99 or the 2K4 thing, go on over to retrogib.com. That's R-E-T-R-O-G-I-B.com. And all the details are there. Mm. Yes. Also, we got some uh, some patrons to mention this week. Oh, nice. Check this out. Patreon.com slash play retro. Stuart J. Moore. Uh, Aaron Tagonist. Aaron Tagonist. Aaron Tagonist. Ta- is that, it looks like that's going to be something. Uh, uh, Aaron Tagonist. You're right. Tagonist. Tanet. Well, there's no K. Or you see, C. if you subscribe, we can also butcher your name. <laughs> and Michael Furlong. I think I may have mentioned him twice, but that's fine. We love him. Uh, no commercials ever. Pre-show content every week. Please join us and support your favorite retro podcast. That's available right there, right now at patreon.com slash play retro. Our right next game will be right Beneath now. a Steel Sky. <gasps> Ooh, I've been wanting to play that forever. Here's like a seven hour game. Perfect. Yeah, That's it's, how much uh, hours they have. Nice and long, short, depending how you look at it. Short. Uh, you want to yeah. you want to help Robert Foster find himself in Union City? Uh, you want to yeah. play a really great old school adventure? Good news. Yes. We're yeah. going to talk about it. I've never a fascist, played it. A fascist AI. I haven't either, but it is on sale on goodoldgames.com, which is how I picked it up and plan on playing it. It's free on Steam. Uh, get, ooh, a, get it is for it free. free on Steam? Oh, yeah. it's free. It's, it's, you're right. It's free. They're free at both places. Look, po- look at that. Point and click. Uh, 
the thing. Uh, it'll play on Windows. Let's see. Or uh, uh, Linux looks like. Yeah. Uh, classic. Um, what else? I'm just trying to find something else here. Uh, basically, think of it as, um, I don't know, Mad Max meets, not Mad Max, uh, Blade Runner meets sort of. Um, Blade Runner, there you go. I don't know what to compare it to. Anyway, this Blade Runner is perfect. It's, I never it's, played it's it back then. I just I was always kind of jealous thing. of everybody who got to play it, and I just never did. Yeah, um, and it's a series because they got some. Well, they got some DLC content, and that is definitely on sale at seventy five percent off. And I actually did pick up uh, Lure of the Temptress, which was one of the ones that I had seen people talking about recently, and I was like, oh, I've got to check that out. So, yep. uh, interested, interested. Yep. I'm going to play this. I'm going to go get it on Steam. Revolution. I will play the shit out of this before we talk about it because I want to know more, and we will mm -hmm. talk about why it's considered one of the great point-and-click adventures of all time. Yes. That's Beneath a Seal, uh, Steel Sky. Be happy, PC people. We're coming back for you. Went from the arcade right to you. <laughs> uh, that is going to do it for us. Like. Big thanks, everybody, for being here. If you'd like to email us, once again, playretroshow at gmail.com. Send those texts and voicemails to 801-471-0462. And for everything else, you can find us at frogpants.com slash playretro. That'll do it for us. Go play something retro. And we'll see you next time. Bye now. Get more at frogpants.com. Asteroid! Asteroid punch! Storage asteroid. Asteroid storm. Forget the asteroid. Asteroid. Asteroid B612. Asteroid approaches! On the asteroid. What storage asteroid? Yeah, that's a nice long outro. <laughs>